Hello, I'm Joe Dillette, owner of The Carving Shop, and what you just watched is real time in sharpening a kitchen knife. Uh, so it only takes about a minute or so uh, to get a razor sharp edge on a kitchen knife using a power sharpener. So this is number four in a series of sharpening and it is about power sharpening. So the last videos we've been working on uh, hand stones. I emphasized at the beginning that uh, you should learn how to use a hand stone for sharpening and uh, then it will come easier to uh, use a power sharpener. I mentioned at the beginning that some people have difficulty in sharpening, so they assume if they go out and they spend uh, $400 for a sharpener that now they're going to be able to sharpen, and no, they will not be able to sharpen. They have to learn how to do it on a stone, and then you can walk up to any sharpening system and uh, you'll be able to use it. So all the sharpening systems that I have used out there are good. The one you were just watching is a jet sharpener. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And we will talk about some of my uh, homemade uh, sharpening systems. One of the reasons why I showed you the kitchen knife sharpening is uh, that's what I use uh, on that grinder other than the homemade. And uh, I wanted to show you how fast it is to get a razor sharp edge on a kitchen knife. And uh, if you achieve that, it uh, becomes a pretty nice uh, business. I charge a dollar a piece for it, and restaurants bring their knives here. And you're only spending maybe two minutes on it, and uh, uh, it's a quick way to make some money. And you do it right while they wait. And uh, so they sit down, they got five, ten minutes uh, to spare, and you uh, sharpen their knives, and you uh, made a little coffee money on the site. So let's talk first about this here jet sharpener that you were watching. So this uh, jet sharpener, uh, first of all, it's not made anymore. Uh, jet doesn't sell them anymore. They discontinued it. I think they're going to replace it with something else. But it's a great sharpener. I'm uh, sorry they're taking it off the market. and Maybe what they're replacing it with will be better. Uh, but anyway, this has got all the features and everything, and uh, basically what it is, is a whetstone, so there's water in here, so when you turn it on, water is flooding the wheel, and then that's the grinding side, and it's just like a, a Japanese water stone, uh, and it's a fairly fine, and this side is the buffing side. Now I've put a different wheel on here, this was the original wheel that came and this wheel here has got a leather on it and uh, what I did is I replaced it with a uh, hard strop because I didn't want to roll the edges uh, so I glued three pieces of MDF board together and I made the, made the wheel for it so uh, you watch me sharpen on the thing it was sharpening by hand uh, this uh, just to mention this wheel was bigger this wheel started out like this one here at 9 and 11 16 diameter, so almost 10 inches diameter, and uh, it's down to about 8 inches diameter now. I've had this uh, jet sharpener uh, uh, probably over six years. I can't remember when I first got it. It was one of the first ones out on the market, and I really liked it. It's uh, kind of modeled after the Tormac except it's got a variable speed. It goes from 90 RPM. It's got the speed control in the back. That's, that's 120 RPM. Uh, I always keep it at 90. It's got a tension control like the Tormac, so when you press hard under the wheel, it won't stall. I've always kept that uh, all the way out there, I haven't got any tension on it, so it has a lot of wear left in it. Uh, so it's been a very good machine for me. Um, the uh, water keeps the uh, tool cool at all times, and the buffing wheel is uh, just ideal in the right spot. 
there's a lot of fixtures that come with this and the fixtures help hold the angle and uh, there's a dresser that comes with it that'll dress the wheel square uh, I don't know if you can see it now, but the wheel is wobbling just a little bit. I haven't dressed it in quite a while. It's also got a little uh, uh, lower area in here because I'm uh, going to put this new wheel on. So that's uh, why I haven't uh, dressed that wheel up. But with all the fixtures that go with this, I recommend that you don't use it. Because once you get dependent on fixturing, uh, then you lose some of the hand touch. So uh, uh, let's say you depended on a fixture to set the angles of your chisels and that. And all the fixturing comes off of this and this goes into the front also and uh, so you're fixturing here and you've got different things for the angle control and so forth. So uh, all that fixturing is wonderful except if you get depend on using it, you come across a tool like this. I don't know if you can uh, see the shape of this, but it's got the straight shank, then it has a short bent, and that's a vein with a short bent. And so if you put this thing in the fixture, it's going to be the wrong angle. You actually have to sharpen almost at this angle rather than at that angle. And uh, because of that bend and the uh, where the cutting edge is in respect to that curve. So uh, it's very difficult to get a fixture. They don't have a fixture that just senses the end of that tool. So you have to set it up by hand anyhow. So if you're dependent on fixtures, it's tools like this that you will be in the dark on how to sharpen it. So once you uh, learn to sharpen by hand, without the fixtures, then you know intuitively when you walk up to it, it's just like you're going to carve that wheel, you approach it at the same angle and uh, that's the way you sharpen it. So, and it's much faster without the fixture. So, um, I, um, I really like the machine, it's very durable, it, uh, I think it's going to last at least another six years or more with this new wheel on it and uh, uh, you know, I do a lot of sharpening. This was through a time when I had my apprentices in here. They all use this. I do a lot of knives on it. So this machine probably has seen more sharpening than any other jet on the market. And this is still the first wheel that I'm on. And I haven't quite wore off two inches diameter on that wheel. So uh, you can't put that wheel on anything else. Uh, especially if it's going faster than 120 RPM because it might explode. That's the thing that you have to be careful of in uh, power sharpening systems is always look at the RPM that that wheel is rated for. If you run it at higher RPM, it's very dangerous. It could it just explode. One thing we should talk about is safety. The direction that the uh, grinding wheel goes doesn't make any difference. However, just uh, this buffing wheel does make a difference. If this buffing wheel was to turn this way, it would be very dangerous. So it always should be going up away from you. And uh, many of the buffers, almost every buffer that you uh, see out there is going like this in the upward direction. Uh, the danger is if the buffer is going the other way and somebody comes up this way, that buffer is going to grab that and it's going to send it flying and maybe it'll send it into you. Uh, so it's very dangerous. So always make sure when you walk up to any power sharpening system to be very mindful of the direction that it's turning. Uh, there are as horror stories out there what has happened to uh, uh, with buffers going the other direction. So, uh, very important. The other thing with safety is safety glasses. And uh, I don't wear side shields on these because these are going pretty slow with water wheel on it. And uh, uh, But still, I do wear safety glasses. Here is one of my homemade sharpeners. It's very easy to make. You can make this thing for about 20 bucks. Uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, but uh, uh, it works very well. Let me show you what this thing is. It's basically it's just a drill. 
So you've got a power drill. I have made an MDF board, again another hard buffing wheel here that I just put into the chuck. And um, this is just a hunk of 2x4, or old scrap 2x4 that I'm clamping right around the, the drill. That's what holds the drill in place. So then when I want to put it on the bench, uh, I just have my, just clamp it right to the bench. This is the one that I generally take out my carving cruises because I need a drill anyhow and then the drill works very good for sharpening. One thing when you're building your homemade sharpeners, it's difficult to find motors that turn slow enough. Most of the time you're up in uh, motors that are running at uh, 3600 RPMs, 1700 RPMs and to get them slowed down seems to be expensive. This drill I picked up from Menards for $19. It's a variable speed. It's also uh, 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 has forward and reverse. It's also a hammer drill, but I don't use it for that on here. But the uh, what this does is you can regulate the speed very easily. So you turn the thing on. It's a little noisy. It has a speed control on here. So by dialing that up, you can go all the way down from where it's not running. You can dial and you can get it up to about any speed that you want. Now in here, you can put on, cut that off so we can hear each other a little bit better. Um, this is a cheap grinding wheel that uh, comes on the bench grinders, the six inch bench grinder that uh, runs at about uh, 3600 RPM and uh, uh, you would never want to use this wheel on your tools when it's on that bench grinder because this is going so fast it's almost impossible not to burn your tools. So that's something we have to be very careful of when we're power sharpening is not to burn the tools. That's why we need lower speeds. However, this wheel works pretty good at a slow speed. Uh, it's a cheap wheel and uh, so you buy the Arbors at uh, uh, a good hardware store like uh, Menards and uh, it, uh, the Arbors fit right in here. Uh, I've got a leather wheel that I've got an Arbor on and uh, a buffing wheel with an Arbor. and uh, So it, the Arbors are pretty cheap so you uh, get an Arbor on it and uh, uh, you can switch quite quite fast. You've got your key on here, you just switch your wheels out. Uh, here I made a buffing wheel where I can get inside the V-tool on this side and then plus the flat area. Uh, so this is also a hard wheel, that's the MDF board. Uh, smaller buffing wheels that uh, you can put arbors on and so forth. The, there are some of these available and what this is is this clamps the uh, machine in the place. So uh, you clamp this on the bench in here. This is where your drill goes in. You tighten it up with the Allen screw and uh, it's, it's adjustable. You can turn it different ways. Uh, but uh, it really isn't necessary to buy it in a couple minutes with a scrap 2x4 and a little bit of hardware, a couple screws, you've really got something that's going to hold it in place uh, and uh, so you don't need to spend the money on that. Here is another sharpening system that I made and uh, some of these things are an experiment on there. I've got an old sump pump motor that runs at 1700 RPM and I have a soft grinding wheel on there. So this is a vitrified wheel uh, and uh, so this can run at 1700 without burning the tool but you got to be very careful. So you can't keep pressure on it, you just have to touch, touch, touch the tool, take it away, also dip it into water. Because uh, 1700 RPM is still pretty fast. I have one hard buffing wheel uh, with the V-tool to get down in the inside the V-tool running at the 1700 RPM. Then I've cut it down, I think this is running at uh, maybe 200 RPM or a little bit less. I've got one of the cheap wheels that come off the 6 inch grinder here. Uh, that's running slow enough that that's not going to burn the tool. 
again, you have to be careful. So uh, it's again a touch, 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 and dip it in the water. Uh, it's always good to dip it first so you get the cooling effect of the water as it's evaporating off and keep dipping it. So never be in a rush when you're grinding uh, metal off of your tools. Your tools are expensive. And when you burn the tool, you're burning the carbon out of the tool. And then you'll never achieve that hardness in that area that it was burned. And it doesn't take much. You can change the hardness of a tool at 400 degrees. And 400 degrees on the tip of a tool, by the time you feel the heat back away from the tip, you've already reached 400 degrees or more on the tip of the tool. So you don't want that tool to feel warm at any time. So uh, they're expensive tools. Many of the tools that I've got that I've been sharpening today are uh, from Tom Meyerhofer, who served his apprenticeship in Munich, Germany during the First World War. He made his living off of it. I've made my living off of these tools, and I hope there's a couple more generations left of them. So uh, a tool should last a long time. So the other things that I have on here, this is a soft buffing wheel, one of the experiments. So one of our uh, wood carvers uh, suppliers out there is John Dunkel, who makes knives. He's made knives. His dad made knives. And that's how he makes his living. When John talks sharpening, you should listen. Uh, so John uh, was talking about the buffer uh, as a way to go from very sharp to scary sharp. And so what I'm trying to do, and I can see some of the effects of that. You can actually hear the difference of a tool going over ingrain before and after it goes on the soft buffing wheel. Soft buffing wheel, I don't put any compound on, neither does John, and uh, it just carries some compound over. That's why some of the blackness is on there. But it does a little bit of buffing, and somehow it's changing that edge. I've got a microscope and I'm going to do more research on how it's doing the edge. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But uh, this is another uh, MDF board here that has got the uh, a round curve to get inside of the gouges and also the V to get inside of the V tool. And this is another MDF board, a flat one, to do the buffing on the outside of gouges. So. Uh, uh, I just made this thing. It's got a couple of pillow blocks on here. The shaft is a uh, threaded rod, and I just have double nuts to hold it on there, just clamp it onto the shaft. And after it was on the shaft, uh, these wheels weren't running real true because I just cut them on the bandsaw. So I took my belt sander, and as it was running, I come down with the belt sander gradually and went tss, 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 until it got the whole thing round. So that is the uh, uh, thing that I did here. Another thing I did is I put a piece of tin. This is just a piece of tin that I got off of an old turpentine can, turned it around inside out, put it on with band iron here to keep the vents from being open to where my uh, uh, compound is not going into the motor. So this I've been uh, running uh, with the uh, things above it. Um, and I do almost all my sharpening here because this is right on the bench. It fits into the groove of the bench. That kind of, uh, it's kind of solid in place, uh, but uh, it runs very well there. And uh, so I just uh, think I've been using this not quite a year yet. Making sharpeners, uh, you can find a Burke sharpener on the market that's very good. Almost any sharpener that you find on the market is good. If you learn how to sharpen with a stone, then you can walk up to any of these sharpeners and uh, you will know intuitively how to use it because you know about the angle, uh, how to adjust the angle for the diameter and the speed and so forth that you're working on.